Hey guys, um, welcome to the end of the little thing we've been having, the Teams month. Now, it is March, so we're going to be having a whole new spew of new topics. And this week, it is for people who are thinking of becoming bloggers, or are newbies, or just started. And we kind of want to give some advice to you, because we've all been blogging for a pretty decent time. Um, I think all of us have been blogging for over a year. I know Katie's been blogging for over like three years. I hit two years in April, and Lauren's been blogging for over a year. I remember her blog anniversary was kind of recent. But we all are kind of sort of experienced in the world of blogging, and I feel like blogging is a very personal activity. Even though you're kind of putting everything out to the world, blogging is something that is 100% you do what you want to do. There is not a handbook or a manual, or I'm sure there's a bunch of like, how to make a good blog.com or something. But in the end, it's your blog and you do what you want with it. And some people will like it and some people will don't. Well, don't. Some people won't. And that's it. There's really nothing you can do about it. But I feel like there are some things that everybody can need to keep in mind when they're making a blog. And it's basically kind of like the trifecta of epicness. The first one being find someone who is a blogger. Like find someone who is established and kind of knows what they're doing and anytime you have any questions or something like that don't go into it blind. Ask, ask, ask. If you ever have any sort of questions or stuff like that about blogging or anything like that you can contact me. I'll put my email down below and I will happily answer any questions that you guys may have on my Twitter or on my email or whatever and then Katie does a very cool program called Big Sis Little Sis where she pairs up um, experienced bloggers with newbie bloggers I don't know if that's open for registration still but I'm not in it <laughs> but the point is that it is there and yeah so you have those options um, when I started blogging I started blogging when I was 13 so blogging has really been like a learning experience for me it's really helped me like grow as a person which is why it's kind of different for me as someone who's already an adult because it's really kind of shaped who I am and how I kind of live my life and whatever but when I started blogging I had Julie who is my best friend now but back when I first knew her I met her in a um, chat of an author and she was the one who introduced me to blogging and it just all kind of went from there and I do not know how I would have like gone through my first like six months because that's usually when we cap you as a stop being a newbie it's six months usually I don't know if everybody does that but most people do and I don't know if I would have survived those six months if it wasn't for her and me just constantly asking questions so definitely look for someone who's more experienced than you to kind of help you out any questions that you may have dose social media is the best thing ever and if you don't utilize it you are not going to be successful yes I'm saying it like Twitter it sounds stupid, because, like, you're like, 140 characters, what am I doing? Uh, Twitter is the best thing ever. My main traffic source is Twitter. Twitter is where you meet authors and publicists and agents and other bloggers, especially other bloggers. I don't think I would never have the bloggers that I know if it wasn't for Twitter. Um, I met Lauren on Twitter. I met Gabrielle on Twitter. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure I met Gabrielle on Twitter. I know I didn't meet Katie on Twitter, because you guys know how I met Katie. Um, I just basically meet almost everyone on Twitter. I have met a lot of my really close blogging friends on Twitter, and Twitter is just the best thing ever. And if you just get one, just like when you start your blog, just get one. And I know a lot of people, like I've had friends who have tried to become bloggers before, um, particularly one friend, and I was kind of like mentoring through that. And the one thing that people make an error, it's not just you make a Twitter and people just kind of show up. Like that's not how it works. It's not like, no one's following me. It's because you need to talk to people. Like, it's a, Twitter, the great thing about Twitter is that it's a two-way street. You don't just, like, post stuff. Well, yeah, you post stuff, but it's not just like, yeah, you post stuff and that's it. No, it's a conversation. You have to, like, talk to people. If someone says something that you have an answer to, you answer, and then they answer, and then it's, it's a conversation. There got to be two people to have a conversation, unless you're crazy or you're me. Because I do talk to myself sometimes. Just admitted that on camera. Oh well. Three 
is going to sound really corny and really cheesy, but it's just find your voice. And besides, like, the whole cliched version of that where I'm, like, a singing coach and you're, like, a trainee and I'm, like, you got to discover the power right in here. But hear me out. Like, when you start and you start writing your reviews, you're not going to be good. <laughs> like, don't have this immediate assumption that you're going to be like, I should work for the New York Times. Because uh, my I read my reviews from Back in the Day and I really want to rewrite them. And I don't because it's kind of how I came to be. And you're going to be conflicted. Like, I, I even now, sometimes, I look at other people's reviews and I'm like, wow, they sound so professional. And they use so many big words and they don't use awesome three times. And that just sounds fantastic. But I know that I will never write a review that's just, like, straight-up crazy talk. Like, the lyrical prose of the... I can't even think of a sentence, see that? Like, the lyrical prose of the equidextrial manner and the way that he spoke in the third chapter or something. Like, I will never write like that. I never will write a review like that because it's just not me and it's not how I talk. And in blogging, the thing that's amazing is that there's no certain way... There's so many varying degrees, long reviews, short reviews, funny reviews, snarky reviews, just serious reviews. There's every type of review out there, and there's none that's, like, not successful. Unless you're bashing something, which is just, um, I'll get to the don'ts later. But the point is, it doesn't matter. Don't try to fit yourself into some, like, box that you're not going to be able to elaborate on. When I first started, I tried so hard to be serious and use a lot of big words and be all fancy and, you know, English professor, oh, this was very, very good. Miss Mastical, Mastical, Magical, I meant Magical. And it just didn't work for me. And you kind of just have to think about it, like, do I want to enjoy myself and write funny reviews and write reviews where it's me talking, which is why I really enjoy writing reviews, because it's bas my reviews are basically, like, exactly what I would say if I was talking to you in person. Which is why I've always thought about doing videos, um, review videos, obviously. Because when I write my reviews, it's me talking. <laughs> it's like me in my head just thinking stuff and then writing it down. And that's, that's just how it works. And if that doesn't work for you and you want to be all lyrical and prosy, just make sure it fits you. And if you don't feel comfortable writing those reviews, don't write them. Because in the long run, we're going to be able to tell that it's not your real voice and... It's just not going to be any fun, and what's the point of blogging if it's not fun? Because it's something for you. Anyway, that's kind of my, like, trifecta, and I've rambled, so let me go ahead and go on to the don'ts. I have two major don'ts. Okay, one, do not confuse a negative review with a bashing review. Um, I know so many bloggers that are afraid, like, even I at one time was afraid of posting negative reviews, because I was so afraid that, like, I'm... I'm saying I don't like this book, what if people, like, attack me? What if people who like it are like, no, you're not allowed in the club anymore? Even though there's no club, don't think there's a club or anything. But that was kind of my mentality. And there's a really, really big difference between a negative review and a trashy review. A negative review is thoughtful and you explain why you don't like it and it has nothing to do with the author or anything crazy like that. A negative review would be something like, um, I'm trying to think of a negative review I did recently. Um, Irony. I really liked the plot, but I didn't like the characters, and then you just explain like that. That's a negative review. That's not bad. It's no big deal. Don't freak out. A bashing review, on the other hand, would be like, I hated this book because the author obviously is racist against Hispanics. What? What? I don't know. It's something crazy like that, and then you're just like, and she's obviously an 85-year-old with one ear in her- I, I talk so much crap yeah something crazy like that like just don't do it it's gonna get you attention but it's not gonna be positive attention and then everybody's just gonna hate you um also don't plagiarize because that's really dumb uh we can tell because it's our words and bloggers are a community and we go on a few blogs and we are a very tight-knit community so like when i say tight-knit it's not like we're not like you can't join but like we know what's going on <laughs> So if you plagiarize this, we're going to find out soon enough. Like, I have never been plagiarized before, or I have and I just haven't seen it yet. <laughs> I don't know. But the point is that don't do it. And two is don't, don't tweet authors asking for arcs. I think that's probably, like, one of my, like, biggest pet peeves about Twitter is that, like, you see, and it's, it's not always your fault. Like, you don't know if you're new 
you don't know, but I'm gonna let you know right now. Authors don't get a lot of arcs. Um, I've had author friends who, um, for example, Myra McIntyre, for her timepiece books, which is the companion to Hourglass, she only got, I think, four arcs. And those are for, like, her giveaway purposes, and then she has family and friends and stuff like that. So don't ask them, because they don't get a lot of arcs, and they're theirs. And if you want an arc, you need to contact a publisher or a publicist. And if you don't know how to contact a publicist, they all usually have on the publishing site a general email, and then from that general email, you meet publicists, and you get to know them. It's not like, ah, give me all the books right now. Like, you gotta, you gotta ease into it. It's like, it's, it's a relationship. You don't just go on the first date and just list everything that you want. No, you're like, hey, can I have this one thing? And then they're like, sure. And then you give them a review, and they're like, oh, thank you. And then you're like, oh, you're welcome. Listen, can I have this other one? And then it's like a, it's a metamorphosis. You're like a caterpillar. And I'm like, don't need to listen to me anymore. I am so, like, out there right now. I'm trying to film this quickly because I have a Euro test tomorrow. And, yeah. So that's really all the advice I have. If you have any questions or comments, leave down below. Twitter, email the works. I will see you guys next week. Bye!